The day after a relapse, I was sober for over three years and I relapsed in November, 2020. And what is that next day like after you have relapsed? If you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. I share just from personal experience, not to glorify alcohol, cocaine, any of that, maybe just to help somebody out there know that they're not alone if they're struggling because it is a battle. I mean, addiction is a battle. And there's so much debate around is addiction a disease? You know, is it something that somebody can just quit and stop? And I want to say this, man, addiction, addiction is its own animal. And I think it's its own animal for everybody out there. Everybody's sobriety journey that I listen to is different. Everybody's relapse stories when they share them is different. And people have relapsed for different reasons. And it's not to make excuses or to justify anything. I just, I think it's just our journey, our journey through relapse if we do relapse and addiction is different for everyone and learning from other people's stories and what they share, I think helps us along in that journey and helps us along with our own story. The next day after I had relapsed, I mean, that night I would gotten just all of it out. I mean, I drank bottle and bottle and it was like a muscle memory had kicked in. I, I knew what to do. I, I drank Gatorade. I took my Advil. And when I woke up the next morning, I remember waking up and just rocking, like, what did I do? Didn't have a hangover much, but it more or less was reflecting, like, why did I do this? And, and then that feeling of, of almost being ashamed and not ashamed at the same time. There's a part of me that was like, you know what? You got this. Just go back at it. You know, you don't have to tell anybody. Don't, don't share about it. Let everybody know that, you know, it's okay to just struggle and just keep doing what you're doing. And, you know what, let's not count it as even a relapse. And then I realized that, you know what, that's not really how I feel in my heart that, you know what, I did relapse. I went off the deep end. I drank a heck of a lot more than what I should have. And I didn't stop drinking that night. And the next day, I didn't really beat myself up. It was more like, well, that didn't work. I better pick up the pieces and kind of go back at it. And do I really want to be sober? I mean, I really questioned it for a little bit of like, do I really want to be sober? Is this something that maybe, maybe I don't struggle with and, and I don't know what part of my brain that was trying to almost convince myself, hey, is this really a relapse? Is this something that you even really struggle with? Maybe you're not an addict. And I think we all go through that different types of self-talk and like trying to amp ourselves up and talk ourselves through things. And I just looked at it this way of going, you know what, I, I am an addict. I am an addict because the way that it made me feel, the way that I could not control it, that I didn't want that life. Really going through any kind of withdrawals, I, I, didn't, I didn't relapse again after that. It was that one night and that one night only, and I'm grateful for it because the time before that that I had relapsed trying to get sober, I mean, I literally had a couple sips of a beer and it ended up being a fifth of vodka within a week. And I knew that that's how my last relapse happened. And so I was really talking, like kind of amping myself up and having like a lot of these, just these internal pep talks of like, hey, you can do this, you can do this. And decided that, you know what, it's not worth myself tearing myself down. And I can't use that stepping stone as an enabling stone because I've done that before. I'd done that before where I relapsed. So you know what, you might as well kind of ride this one out and let's see what happens and it's okay to drink. And I didn't want to do that again. I did not want to be that person again. I wanted to put it back together because I ended up liking my life when I didn't drink. When I don't drink, I make very sound thoughts. I'm a lot more coherent. And I love the way that my direction of my life was going. I love the opportunities that had become, you know, in my face. And that finally things had started to kind of change for me some to the positive that I didn't want to go backwards. I didn't want to take a couple steps back and I wanted to be real. And it was like, you know what, I'm going to share about it. And it's hard. It's like we drop our pride and we drop our ego and it's like admitting weakness and it's admitting like failure, but it's not. It's like sharing your story of going, hey, this is what I've been through. This is what I've done. And here's where I'm going. You can find a lot of strength in that. I think sometimes we put so much emphasis on relapse that I wanted my day one to be almost like a day of celebration of like, you know what? You're starting over and that's okay. Like no problem resetting the sobriety calendar. No problem resetting any of that and not beating myself up when I did it. I mean, every time I've relapsed before, I would beat myself up and it was so much negative self-talk that I'm a failure, that I'm broken, that I'm no better than a bottle, that I can't do this. 
And I would just tear myself down inside and it was worse than what anyone else could ever tear me down. I would beat myself up so much and I'd feel the depression start to sink and I'd feel the anxiety sink in. And this time it was more of like a joy sinking and of like, hey, you made it three years already. You have made it three years. You got this. Like if you really want this, you got this again and you can do it. And I found motivation and strength from that. The next day when I woke up, like, did I have the urge to drink again? I did. I mean, I want I don't want to say that I didn't have any urge to drink and I woke up Tony Robbins, I'm going to, you know, take on the world. I woke up and it was like, dude, I could start drinking some more right now and like make it kind of an excuse and we'll go like this window of relapse. I didn't want to do that. I figured, you know what? I let it all out. I, I, it isn't something that I can control. I didn't control it last night. I just kept drinking. And, you know, I don't want that life. I mean, when I was drinking, I was in a different financial situation than what I am now. It didn't affect me as much. I knew that I'm restarting my life. And, and restarting my life, I really wanted the right way to do it. I wanted to be able to be there for it. And if I was to rebuild my life right, I can't do it with a clouded judgment. I can't do it with a clouded mind. I mean, alcohol sends me almost into like this mania state where I blow money. I don't think about tomorrow. I'm only living for that moment, which there's a part of me that really enjoys that. I love living only for the moment. I think that we get a ton out of life when we live only for the moment. But I also miss the moments because I'm not prepared for the next day. I'm not prepared for the next week. And I looked at it this way, like, hey, you can keep drinking or you just, you make the stance right now. And I had to make the stance and I didn't go through any shakes. I didn't go through any tremors. I mean, I went through a little bit in my of, of mental withdrawal, like, hey man, let's just do this. Let's just do this. And I, and I had to keep fighting that off a little bit, but I also found a lot of motivation in it. I didn't have any kind of physical withdrawals and I didn't find any urge to want to do anything else. I mean, the before... When I was massively in my addiction, I was using alcohol and cocaine at the same time. I didn't have any kind of urge to go out and add any kind of drugs or anything to the mix, which I looked at as like, hey, this is a big positive. This is a victory for me. And I had to start looking at everything again as a victory. Every day is a victory. And it's hard. I mean, it's like, hey, change your positive mindset. No, it's hard. Like you beat yourself up and you struggle, but it's all on how you struggle and how you almost romanticize that relapse. It's either you're beating yourself up during it and you're tearing yourself completely down or you're picking up the pieces and you're going back at it. I mean, relapse is not something easy to do. I think the hardest part of my relapse is just being honest with others that I relapsed because that re I really had to take that ego and put that aside again. And I won't, didn't want people just to look at me as a failure. I mean, I, I guess that was my biggest thing that I really struggled with. It wasn't even picking up the bottle again or, or putting the bottle down or fighting against, you know, drinking. It was more that I had to tell everybody that, that I failed. And did I fail or did I find strength and am I going back at it? And that's why I guess I didn't want to share about it even until I had about 90 days, a little over 90 days under my belt because I wanted to be able to go, you know what? I picked up the pieces. I went back at it. I didn't want to play the poor me sob story. I didn't want to, you know, there's so many stigmas that go through our head when we relapse and we feel that we fall into that stigma. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make it mine. And that's not the ego talking. It was just what I felt in my heart because I do feel that everybody's sobriety journey is different. Everybody's relapse stories are different. I mean, I know people that have relapsed and they have not come out of that relapse. And I'm grateful that I did. I'm grateful that I made that conscious decision the next day of like, hey, you drank. You ain't got to drink no more. You don't have to do this right now. And I was able to keep pushing it through. If you're struggling out there, I mean, tell everybody that you need help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to scream at the top of your lungs of what you're struggling with. I mean, it is hard because it's that just self-medicating pill that you almost take that it numbs everything. And that's the hardest thing is we just, we do it. I feel a lot of times, at least I always did it, it was to numb it. And thankfully, this time I kind of realized in life, like, hey, I don't have really a whole lot I need to numb. I think we use a lot of times just to, like, numb it. And I was happy that I wasn't in a point in my life where I had to really numb anything. I, I didn't want to numb anything. I wanted to experience this. I mean, I was in Orange County. I'm moving up to Idaho. I want that fresh start. I want that clear-headed. I want that vision because I have a vision of, of where I want my life to be. And my life isn't with a bottle. My life isn't drunk in a, in a messed up apartment where, you know, I, I'm barely making ends meet and all I care about is getting off of work and getting drunk 
And then even to the point where that demon inside you, that beast inside you comes out. And now you're using, because it's only a matter of time before I ruin everything in my life. And I knew that. And I didn't want that again. This time through on, on this relapse, it was very different than any of my other relapses. My relapses, typically, if I relapsed, I went hard for a year, two years. I mean, it was a relapse, relapse that I had to pull myself out of. And this was one of those that I had to look at the positive of it and go, you know what? It was a one night relapse. It one night you picked it up and you went back at it and and feeling inside my heart of like, hey, this is part of my story. And maybe the more that I share, the more that nobody feels alone, because I mean, it just sucks. You don't feel like anyone understands when you relapse. You feel you feel alone. You feel like you're on this island and like you don't want to get off the island because it's like judgment everywhere. And people are going to tell you how to get sober and how you screwed up instead of saying, hey, like, let's go back at it. Let's do it. And whatever you did this last time, there was something in there that didn't work. So maybe we find out next time we get to that point, what works. I mean, when it comes down to it, we're all different. We all medicate for different reasons. It just, if you're struggling, asking for help, finding that courage and that strength within you to ask for help, not being able to get to that point where we isolate and we're in love with the bottle. We're in love with the drugs and we don't want to stop. It's Having that courage and that strength inside, knowing that there's a few people out there that are going to understand what we're going through. So let everybody know because you're going to find you're going to have some support out there that you never even knew that you had. If you are struggling, I got a link down below to NA and AA. You know, find what works for you. I mean, maybe the meetings don't work for you. Maybe the 12 step doesn't work for you. Maybe there's something else out there, inpatient, outpatient that works for you. Just find out what works for you and just don't give up. And look at every day as that new beginning, that breath of fresh air that you can breathe it in if you want it. And you can go back at it if you want it. I mean, to the addicts out there struggling, I've been there. I've been there a lot of different times. And I know that you can pull through. I've pulled through a lot. And I'm no different than you. Just like with you, I struggle. I fight my demons also. But you know what? You're not alone. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's do this together.